the pill. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, over 10.6 million women in the United States take this tiny tablet today. Yet, while this legendary pill is often celebrated uncritically, its history is left unexplored. Using the initial drug trials in Puerto Rico, the constructed epistemology of ignorance surrounding side effects, and the subsequent complications in America as evidence, this short film will attempt to explore and expose the unknown history of the birth control pill in order to highlight and criticize the relationships between gender, race, class, and science in American history. Margaret Sanger, often referred to as the mother of birth control and more rarely referred to as a supporter of population control, had been dreaming of a birth control pill since 1912. In order to make this dream come true, she partnered with scientists John Rock and Gregory Pincus, who, in 1955, believed that they had discovered the secret to an effective oral contraceptive. What they had not discovered was a way to get around the legal, cultural, and religious opposition of birth control in American society. Unable to conduct drug trials in the states, the two men found an alternative solution. Testing in Puerto Rico, where birth control was legal, population growth was a concern, and possible sample size was large. They recruited women from the slums of San Juan and did not tell these women that they were participating in a drug trial. Rock and Pincus advertised the pill as a modern American technology capable of preventing women from having children that they did not want or could not afford. These poor, non-white, female bodies were seen as insignificant, expendable resources for scientific consumption. The intersections of their gender, class, and race devalued these women in the eyes of the scientists and were used to justify their exploitation. Dr. Edris Rice Ray, who was in charge of the trials in Puerto Rico, complicates the story further. In 1956, Rice Ray reported that women were suffering serious side effects, including nausea, vomiting, headache, and stomach pain. She tried to convince Rock and Pincus to end the study because of these problems, but they considered the symptoms to be minor and dismissed her concerns. These white, male scientists called on the old-fashioned notions of nervous system hierarchy in which the brain governs the periphery. The women's symptoms were labeled psychosomatic, their experiences were ignored, and their voices were silenced. An explicit epistemology of ignorance was constructed, and the pill was brought to America in 1957. From 1957 to 1959, the FDA approved use of the pill only for severe menstrual disorders, but in 1960, the pill was mass marketed as a contraceptive in mainstream America. Within three years, 2.3 million American women were on the pill. By concealing the pill's side effects and dangers, the pill's developers enforced consumer passivity by depriving them of the information they needed to evaluate it. Women were left out of the scientific conversation, and many suffered serious physical consequences. It wasn't until Barbara Siemens' publication of The Doctor's Case Against the Pill in 1969 that the FDA began to reconsider the safety of this magical new technology and decided to lower the hormonal dosage. Although the side effects and controversies surrounding the safety of the pill have been largely resolved, the broader questions that this story raises are still being explored. Whose bodies are visible and vital, and whose bodies are invisible and insignificant? Who is allowed access to scientific knowledge in our culture? And who is given the ability to actively construct that knowledge? These questions may not be resolved yet, but by working to shed light on the darker histories of our past, we can work to expose epistemologies of ignorance, giving voice to the invisible.